everyone. Welcome to the Utah Motorsports Complex, one of the most scenic, kind of picturesque racetracks surrounded by snow-capped mountains here in Utah, but not worrying about that for the moment. We've got some a little bit better. 2018 Yamaha YZF-R1 and 2018 Yamaha YZF-R1M. Now with me is my buddy Aaron Bast, uh, the product planning manager, I guess you would say. At, senior at, product at, planner. Senior yeah. product planning manager. Senior product planning. <laughs> yeah. Get that right. At, uh, at Yamaha. What, I want to ask you, what actually is involved in like being a product planning guy? Like, what's what do you do? What's the deal? Yeah, Randy, that's that's a good question. I don't think a lot of people know what product planning is, but basically it's the voice of the customer. So it's our job to be immersed in the market, to understand the customer, understand the product. And what we do is give recommendations to upper management, to designers, to engineers, to uh, uh, the development of the bike. So it's our right. voice to uh, do the research, uh, talk to customers, talk to journalists like yourself, and, and just gather as much information so that we can make these Yamaha bikes as best as they possibly can be. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, now that you know what he does, uh, he's gonna take us through some of the updates, if you will, for, for 2018. Now, essentially, the two big things uh, for the R1M, one, one over there, is the brand new Smart uh, Olin Smart Electronic Suspension, uh, Smart EC2. Uh, very similar to a, a particular red Italian bike that was just <laughs> released, but we won't mention that. Uh, also over here on the, the standard R1 though, the standard R1 gets a fair few of the, the same details. So what do we got? We got new uh, auto blip on the downshift. That's right. We get yep. a new um, launch control launch system. Control system. We Lift get control. New, new wheelie control. And then the rear tire is, the rear is tire. changed as well too, yeah. All right, cool. So let's have a bit of a look at this thing. Um, all right, so one of the big things was always the, the R1 that never came with a downshift on the on the blipper yeah that's true yeah. that's true so yeah the um uh, when we completely redesigned this bike in 2015, it did come with a quick shifter in the up direction, but yeah, yeah of course the market wanted the, the downshift feature as well. So uh, that feature has been in the market. We have uh, the downshift auto blip feature on the, the 2018 R1 and R1M for, yeah. uh, uh, for this bike. Yeah. Um, so not new, but uh, um, in terms of being in the market, but still we got it on there and I think it's uh, all the customers are gonna appreciate it. You mentioned tires as well. Now where this, this kind of intro is basically doubling as a Bridgestone R11 tire launch as well, which That's will true. have a separate video for that. Um, 190 tire on the rear on on the, the R1, R1 and then a 200 then a series 200 on, on, the, on the R1M. On the R1M. Yeah. Now the wheels as well, like people seem to think, some people I've seem to think that the wheels are different on the R1 and the R1M, but they are actually the standard wheels. That, that's something that we really wanted to be clear with this uh, with this introduction for this event. Um, sometimes I think people think that you have to step up to the R1M to get these to get some really premium features, but actually the R1 does come standard with an aluminum fuel tank yep. and magnesium wheels, which right. I think is an amazing amazing competitive advantage for a motorcycle in this price range. Uh, it like 17 grand or something? 16,699 for the MSRP for the for the R1. And when you consider the uh, all of the electronics that you're getting, you're getting titanium connecting rods, yeah. you're getting a titanium exhaust system, magnesium wheels, uh, as I mentioned, the aluminum mm -hmm. fuel tank. I mean, that's really amazing value considering yeah. what you're getting. Well, look, let's go over to, to the big dog yeah. over here. Now, this is Yamaha's Big Daddy Premium Superbike. You know? That's right. Um, now, just like body works, I mean, you can tell that this one doesn't have as much carbon fiber as this. I mean, you've obviously got carbon front guards and the carbon this and carbon that. And then the, the seat cowl as well as carbon as fiber well. as well. Yeah. Um, also, with the the R1 comes with the communication control unit, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. it does. Yeah, that comes standard. It's a, it's an optional part for, for R1 yep. if you want to put the communication control unit on there. But yeah, that's one of the, the really so cool... So what does that allow you to do? So there's a lot that you can do. It's a very, a very advanced uh, system. So one of the things that it does is uh, data acquisition. Yep. So it does have GPS. Yep. So you can uh, yeah, turn it on and, and go around the track and you can use GPS to... Um, see where you where you are and it's recording that and then at the same time it's it's uh, recording data as well so yeah. you can see um, I mean just amazing parameters there's a front wheel speed rear wheel speed you mm -hmm. can see where the slide control the traction control all of the electronics you can see when they're activating uh, you can see where the the lift control the wheelie control system is being used so it's yeah. it's overwhelming I mean yeah, it's yeah. it's one of those technologies that you could you could almost spend endless hours just <laughs> geeking out on on 
not only seeing what you're, you know, seeing what's being measured and what's being recorded, but you can um, make adjustments. So yeah. you can use mobile devices, so um, tablets and, and mobile phones. You can change yeah. settings to the to the uh, YRC system. So if you're Going to the, going to the track in the morning. You're going to Chuckwalla. Or you're going to Laguna Seca or something, and you you know that you want to set the Yamaha ride control in a certain way. Yep. You know all the power modes and the traction control and the slide control. You can do all that and and um, do that on your your mobile device, a tablet or a phone, and then upload that to the to the bike itself. Question, so. question, Ben. Can you get into your friend's one and set the traction control to like? <laughs> no, 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 no. My understanding is they're all um, they're they're all unique so it's not one of those things where you can <laughs> hack into your buddies and, and, and yeah <laughs> yeah um, but also yeah something else I want to mention on the the R1M so we have the, the communication control unit the carbon fiber bodywork is uh, is a big part of that as well too um, I'm sure in a minute we'll get to the Olean's yeah. electronic racing suspension which is a, a big feature and then of course you have this beautiful unique um, design to it so we have special color and graphics we really wanted to highlight the the uh, materials that are being used on this bike. So you can see how much carbon is being exposed so the, the rider can see that. We've got a polished aluminum fuel tank here. Also the swing arm is, is polished as well. And we even thought about even the smallest details as well. So we've got R1M logos on the magnesium wheels. Again, just to give that pride of ownership for yeah. this true premium Halo Super Sport motorcycle from Yamaha. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's have a look at Big change, I guess, for the R1M. Uh, is that suspension, yeah, the, the Olean's electronic here, racing suspension. Olean's electronic suspension. So, let's have a look in here. I mean, the R1 Dash, if you haven't seen the R1 Dash before. It's gorgeous. It's one of the coolest looking things ever. Yeah. It's it's absolutely bitching. It's in the track mode right now, so both the R, R1M and the R1. For the TFT meter, there's two settings. You can have the, the street mode, or we're looking at the track mode. Yep. What's cool is that the, the tack actually starts at 8,000 RPM, because yep. you know when you're on the track, you're, you're obviously in the upper RPM range, and then yep. there's a bigger emphasis on the, the gear position, so you can see that yeah, big giant. Exactly. Uh, green neutral indicator and then we've got the the lap timer as well too we've minimized the the uh, speedometer so you've got the in the speedometer in the lower left hand corner all right so how do we get into this um, so just hold down menu menu down here okay and then so you can uh, i don't know what you want to do but so if you want to go to the the display mode if you want it to see the the street mode you can click on display mode yeah oh if we go well, let's have a look at the, the suspension. Okay, go into to YRC settings. YRC settings. Click on that, and then roll over to ERS. Okay, so but the big feature. Let's have a look if we got YRC, which is that's Yamaha ride control. Ride so that's control. really the overall. Okay. Um, that can control the overall parameters okay, of so all of the PWR, which is obviously power mode, power mode, set, CCS is traction, slide CCS control slide system, control, launch, control launch control system, system quick, quick shift, shift up, shift up, quick shift down, down lift control. Some people control, call it wheelie control. That's one, of your, that's one of your new features for this year and now you've got the ars uh, yes yeah so, so how do we get to so, so if you go one more over go to that uh go to the arrow yep. click on that okay. now this is this is really the big change for right, 2018 r1m so this is what we're calling and what oleans are calling obti uh, 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 objective based tuning interface yep. so what that's going to do is is uh, in the past for 2017 we had uh, adjustability for front and rear compression and rebound adjustability yep. and I know those terms have been around for a very very long time yep. but at the same time they are pretty technical and if, yeah. if you're not quite familiar with what that is um, it, it could be a little confusing possibly so what we yeah. wanted to do is make it as easy as possible for the rider to, to make adjustments so rather than <laughs> getting caught up with rebound and compression in front and rear, uh, we just wanted to focus on um, objective situations. So yeah. brake support, corner support, support, acceleration support, so. and then just an overall front or rear firmness. Just trying to make it yeah. easier so to adjust. If you, want, you want to stop the thing diving under brakes, you dial in a bit more Precisely. brake support yeah. you know, on, on acceleration likewise. Precisely, Precisely. Um, yeah, it's got a faster tuning processor I think as well uh, with this thing uh, well the, the system is updated um, we're still trying to get trying to trying to get as many details as we can yeah. but it is the the second generation second of this gen, yeah. of this Olean's this electronic was the first one to come out with well no no the, the Ducati was the first one to come out with electronic suspension but the R1M was the first electronic suspension Yamaha sport bike. 2015 yeah 2015 the R1M did have uh, Olean's electronic racing suspension but um, 
as I said earlier, we're always trying to get information and gather yeah. feedback, and, and uh, we've made it uh, a little bit easier to, to adjust as well. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we'll go in here, and then you just got straight mode. Worry about that later. Yeah. But yeah. So it's subtle tweaks, shall we say, for the R1. Yeah, there's there's subtle yeah, changes. R1M. That's right, subtle changes. Um, that fantastic engine returns again. Uh, yeah. The chassis, uh, same frame, same suspension components, but um, yeah, Super Sport is important to us, and yeah. and this is a one thing that's so exciting about Super Sport is that the. Uh, there's always something new, you yeah. know, and, and I think that that customer, they, they, they love trying new technologies and they want the latest and the greatest. So we try very hard to, to give the customers those things. And yeah, the changes are, are subtle, um, but, uh, but nevertheless, I think they're, it's, uh, it's gonna make a difference to the, to the so customer. So what's the rider. MSRP on this? Uh, MSRP on this one was $22,999. A lot of bike for twenty for twenty three grand. Absolutely, and and for me, what I get so excited about is thinking, I don't know, ten years ago, thinking about world superbike level yeah. technology, even I mean, even MotoGP technology, yeah, and you think about what you're getting, it's it's really it's really it's amazing. I know one thing we get excited about is the the slide control system from uh, from Yamaha on these two mm -hmm. bikes. That actually came from. YZR M1 MotoGP technology yeah. that no, came from those bikes just you know just a couple of years ago and it's already here on the production bike so that gets me excited empowering the customer and giving them that that ability to have a six axis IMU and having all of these electronic controls that are that are so seamless yeah. you know i think in the past some manufacturers had electronics that were maybe a little bit rudimentary, you know, maybe a little bit too intrusive. But what's fantastic about these bikes is that all of these technologies are there and they're assisting you and they're helping you. And it's not really a, a hindrance. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it really is helping you be a better rider, ride faster when you're on the track. Well, and someone like Josh Hayes or <laughs> Alex Lowe's, I mean, you know, for the, mo for the majority of the world's people, the, they're gonna be a, an absolute aid, those rider aids. But, Look, why don't uh, why don't we go and put some leathers on? We'll go and have a crack and see see if it all works. I think that I think that sounds fun. Yeah, sweet. All Thanks, right, man. Thanks, Randy. All right, let's do it. All right. Okie dokie. 2018 YZF R1. First bike off the rig today. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so we'll be out on the R1M a little bit later, but for now, we're gonna give the, the standard R1 a crack. So, as you saw before from Aaron, a bunch of changes for both the bikes. Um, obviously, the R1M gets the four electronic Olins, but this time around, our main, so the main thing with these, uh, with the R1 is the fact that we have uh, auto blip on the downshift now, and also the new wheelie control program, which is the same as the R1M. And here we go. Already you can tell, like, just the power and the way this thing moves around the circuit. It's so confident it's far. This one is sweet. Oh, that auto blip, that's lovely. Makes a big difference for the corner entry. I mean, it's funny, like, not so long ago, you could almost be forgiven for just thinking, oh, you don't need auto blip on downship. And for, look, for the most part, you probably still don't, but it does make riding a lot easier in that regard. Provided that you don't miss a gear, which auto blips have been known to do from time to time. CBR 1000 double R did it to me a couple of times in Port of Mail last year. Probably could have got a lot harder into that one. Bring it back in. Yeah. Got that new Bridgestone R11 on here as well, which is just a badass tire. Let's pick her up. Probably a little bit too early in the 
pace for that corner. But... Man, I love this bike. It's been a while since I've ridden an R1. But they are awesome bikes. They make you feel like Superman. There's a tiny bit of hesitation with that downshift. It's not super light. You really have to lift the lever off properly. Not like a race system where you can just breathe on the thing and it'll... Oh, that was an awful corner entry. Come on, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, you do have to definitely shift it back. Some of the race systems have tried. You just have to touch the lever. There's so much punch that we're in second gear now. Rack control on level two. It's just a lovely bike to ride far out. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Silver Beast. So the New Orleans Smart EC2 system, new algorithms, new everything for this. So they've changed, as you saw before, they've changed how Orleans has changed how you basically interact with the system. Whether you want more cornering, more braking, uh, stability, more acceleration stability. You dial in effectively what is known as squat or no squat. It has a real special feel to it, this thing. Like, you, you know that you're on something pretty cool when you see this sort of stuff, this gorgeous carbon fiber. It does fall ass, it really does. There is a lot of things I like in life. There are very few things that I like more than waking up a big ass superbike like this. Woo! Woo! <laughs> yeah, baby! Yeah, it's a little bit softer, I think. Then the, the ride feels a little bit softer than the than the um, KYB equipped fork of the standard R1. But it does feel a little bit more compliant. Like it seems to be riding some of the bumps a little bit better. It also turns in just a little bit more fluidly. If I was Carl Lyman, I'd be backing this thing in everywhere, but I am not of his caliber. God, you can get silly with the throttle on this thing. It just has such a linear connection to the tyre. Except for the monkey who's controlling it, can't hit an apex. Yeah, yeah so the quick shifter. Like I was saying before with the standard one, it's a little bit of a heavy shift. It's not as light as a nice race system, but it's a, a better addition now that's there anyway. Suspension performance is absolutely brilliant, it really is. You know, for my riding style and as fast as I can ride, I mean, I could race this thing. I remember the first generation Smart EC system. You know, I didn't, I didn't not love it, but I still preferred the feeling of conventional suspension. You still probably do, really. Oh. Um, but you know, that, that really does take care of the majority of the work for you. 
Grady on the throttle there, and that, my, my ladies and ladies and gentlemen, my friends, is the benefit of amazing electronics. Because normally, I'd be on my ass. Right, look, it is Yamaha's flagship bike for a reason. This, it's an outstanding machine. It just feels awesome when you ride it. Like you feel like a god. I and mean, you look at the, the dash in front of you and those carbon fiber bits and pieces and the noise the thing makes and the pop on the downshift. Ugh. My goodness. A marvelous machine. I love superbikes. <laughs> Phew. Yeah. I'm shagged. I'm actually quite tired. <laughs> I've done so many laps in the last couple of days, but hey, look, can't, I'm not complaining. So anyway, uh, R1 and R1M, um, yeah, look, an, an exceptional bike. It always has been. Um, the cross-plane crank engine's brilliant. The, the auto blip on the downshift is a real like gain now for, for, for outright lap performance. The shift, however, is a little bit, it's not notchy, but it's not uh, very light uh, on the downshift, so you have to be just considerate of the downshift. You know, it's not like a race system where you can just bang down the gears and then brah, and it just pulls into the corner. You gotta be a bit more just gentle and let the thing get into its gears and, and off you go. And that's provided you are using the auto blip system as well. I mean, you can just pull a clutch in and just bang down the gears and it's gonna do it like it always did. But that was, a, I, I did get a couple of false neutrals, but that was more my, technique I guess you would say when you're riding when I was riding that was more that wasn't a, um, a machine error I don't think um, that was more just once I changed my braking technique and my cornering technique and and downshifting then I started to feel a lot more sort of natural with it but yeah that was a so I spent the first couple of days the uh, first couple of sessions on the R1 on the standard one but the one we really wanted to ride was this bad boy and you know uh, the R1M is it's the jewel I guess uh, for the Yamaha superbikes. Um, you know, Yamaha have had a bit of a history with occasionally coming out with, you know, higher spec R1s like R1 SPs and all that kind of stuff from back in the day, but they never bought out a dedicated bang, this is the top of the line R1. And 2015, that's what we got. So for this year, the, the big change that is gonna make the biggest difference is the use of the Olin Smart EC2 um, suspension as you, as you saw before with Aaron going through it and, and telling us all about it. This, uh, you know, it has a few more sensors involved as well. I'm not sure exactly how more sensors, but a few more sensors, so it just makes it more precise and makes it more enjoyable. You know, we're, we're, I went out in the first session on standard settings, came out and it felt good, felt really good, but I came back in and went, right, let's, let's jack everything up. So we just rammed everything up, put the cornering su support up, the acceleration support up, you know, all that stuff, just rammed it all right up. And it really felt like a proper track bike then. Once, you, once it was more taut, it would hold itself up better under braking. And likewise, you could get on the gas and the thing wouldn't squat so hard under acceleration. You know, the, that system now is at the level. I mean, a lot of people would always whinge and bitch about electronic suspension and for fair reason too. Like it was, it's kind of like, you know, you imagine, remember your Game Boy back in the day, you know, Game Boy wasn't that great. Now you can play way better games on your phone. Like if you think about electronic suspension in that regard, like it's taken leaps and bounds from when it came out in, in whatever form you want with BMW or you know, whoever else was, was doing it. Now it's like seriously good stuff. Um, and the smart EC2 system is absolutely brilliant. I mean, I could quite happily take that thing and go racing with it and it'd be sweet uh, without actually having to do anything. But then, you know, you have to take all this gorgeous carbon fiber and all that kind of stuff off it. And, and I suppose that's the one thing I do love most about the R1M is that it, you have a sense of occasion when you ride the R1M. Like this is the premium product. You know, this, this is the best of the best that Yamaha has come out with. And it's just, it deserves all the accolades it gets. It's a good cracking bike. And you know, the, like I've said before, you can't build bad super sport bikes now. It's very easy to build bad super sport bikes, but you'll just get slaughtered if you do and you know when you're building a premium product like this and it's good to see too like the you know kawasaki's got the zx10 double r we've got the r1 and we've got the r1m we've got the honda sp2 we've got all that stuff but previously it was always the europeans that were doing it now we have 
uh, proper proper stuff from the Japanese from the last couple of years. But man, it's a it's a rolling work of art. This thing, it's gorgeous, and um, yeah, I'm stoked. And it's a, it is a really really good bike, brilliant bike, brilliant bike from Yamaha. So if you like this video and you like any of the videos that we're doing, please hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, always helps. Uh, any comments that you got, leave them in the, in the comment section below. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. We'll also have the links in there for the gear that we've been wearing so that you guys can get out there and buy that sort of stuff if you, if you so fancy. Uh, but yeah, thanks, for, thanks for, for watching and uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Cheers.